Oy, oy, oy. Whenever they do quick movements, I'm scared. Man, it feels so good to finally walk down. Exactly! <laughs> Okay guys, so I have my tea, it's like uh, 7 a.m. now, actually uh, the sun here is actually sh showing up already, quicker than uh, in the past places, here are more peaks, and uh, yeah, I talked to the owner here, it's a super nice place, and my plan today is uh, I'm gonna leave my backpack and everything here and I'm gonna finish my tea and then I'm gonna hike up the Kyanjin Ri so uh, I'm gonna go to the peak leave all my stuff here then I'm kind of gonna come back then uh, I'm gonna eat some chow mein pack my bags and uh, start my way back down because uh, then we already did it we did it guys. This one peak and then then we are done. It's uh, day four actually now. Yes, day four. And then we're gonna go as far down as possible. Actually I wanted to go further than uh, Langtang but I promised the people in Langtang to uh, stay there. And yeah, so I, I gotta make a plan. Maybe I just get some food there or anything. I, I have to check my money. But uh yeah, today we start our way back down, so I'm very, very excited for this. It's gonna be awesome. All those stairs, everything back down. The only thing I would really need is like a stick or something, but uh, maybe I can find one. But uh, as you can see, there are not many trees or anything. Maybe I have to ask for one. But yeah, if you guys watched the past three days, thank you for joining on day four. Um, I actually had power this night, so this was great, so I was able to actually charge my phone, some of my camera batteries, so we are running on three full batteries again, and we only have uh, two days left. Sadly, there the ATM here wasn't working, so if it would, I would just have uh, bought good food at every stop I am I'm, uh, arriving. But yeah, we gotta get back to Sia Probesi, get some money, find a way back to Kathmandu. And then I have a lot of stuff to do. Like then I missed like uh, one week of news, one week of emails, one week of your guys' comments. Uh, maybe like uh, bad surprises like insurance, emails or anything like that. Also I missed like uh, one week of news, like the Ukraine war invasion. There's so much stuff I missed because here you're just kind of disconnected. Also, as you as you may can see, it's quite cold here in the morning, so I'm gonna hike the first time in a warm cloth. I'm actually even wearing my pants over my pants for sleeping. And yeah. Anyways. I would have to do a lot of stuff. I have to do my COVID test. I have to print my Indian visa. I have to do so much stuff. Whew. But it was worth it. It was fun. I mean, it was my window. So, uh, yeah. See you guys once we are uh, starting our way up. Okay, guys. So, we're heading out. Luckily, because of the night and the cold, all the mud here is uh, frozen. So... Uh, Gonna keep my shoes clean at least for a while. But also the track gonna be a bit frozen. And I'm super hungry but uh, I gotta earn my breakfast. So this is it the Kyanjin Gompa, Kyanjin village. I just have to find a way out. Like this is a it's a maze and it has no real roads connecting like uh, it's a you never really know where to go. Sometimes you gotta trek through snow. Or 
of true just ice first time I had to use my long clothes So people told me it's gonna take like three hours. We will see. Also we will find out if I can handle the altitude of 3,800 meters. I think we are at 3,800 now. And I think we go to 4,200. But I'm not sure, I can't find my map right now. I've seen a sign yesterday showing the direction, so I'm trying to get back to it. Oh, I think there's the sign. And the sun is already so bright here. I remember back down the down the path, the sun like uh, was hidden until like 8:30. Now it's like 7.30 and the sun is already bright. So here, what does it say? Way to... Yes, that's Kyanjinri, two hours straight on. Okay, perfect. Then I was uh, mostly right. Two and a half hours. And then I guess uh, it's gonna be a hard way back too because it's uh, quite high, I guess. But yeah, anyways, we have a long day before us. I'm not gonna make more uh, one hour videos. So, uh, also, I gotta find the path. It says up, but what do they mean by up? There is no path. Anyways, see you once, uh, once I'm on the track. I found a tiny hamster like big mouse. Let me try not to scare it and get closer. Oh no, it's gone in its hole. It came from here. I can still hear it. But yeah, I, I think I'm not on the right path. Because there's no real path here. Also, uh, the sign said up to Kianjinri and right to somewhere else and I actually went left because left was the only way. So I don't think I will meet someone here to ask except Mr. Yak. So I think I'm on the right path here. It's the only path I found. It's uh, a bit snowy but uh, if I hurry I'm gonna walk this before the snow mat, so uh, I'm not gonna have any slippery ground. Awesome view. The yaks having their breakfast. I hope they don't block my way like yesterday. And yeah, I think I can feel the, the height a bit. Like, uh, it's such a blessing walking without a backpack. But it's still steep and it still felt like I'm getting out of breath quickly. So uh, I'm gonna make some breaks every like uh, I don't know, 50 meter up. I don't. I actually don't know. Look at those yaks. They're just sitting there up there. Like they don't care about the path. They just climb that. As expected, we have a uh, Mr. Yak blocking our path. So, oh, 
and he heard my prayers and he went off the path. But he's staring at me. I'm always scared that they just like charge at me. But yeah, gotta gotta make my way past them quickly. Look how the yak poop melts the snow. He's still looking back. I'll come in peace. No reason to be afraid. And also right now I'm literally walking on poop, so no reason to avoid it, but uh, it's just the grass here, so it's not like uh, dog poop or anything, it's actually just grass. I'm getting chased by the sun. Anyways, I'm making fast progress. Walking without a backpack is like, I'm feeling so relieved and I'm so excited for the way down. Yeah. The air here is super good and I'm super hungry. Like I can hear my stomach. But I gotta do this and then eat a big, big portion of chow mein. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it, I, I think I mentioned it in the last uh, video or the one before. Uh, I not just have uh, videos like this, I have playlists from India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, a few videos, Czech Republic and Germany. So, uh, most people, they only watch my current content, but they're so, they're like a hundred videos. So. Uh, I recommend you check them out because there are a lot of videos I'm much more proud of and that are much more entertaining than uh, this. Anyways, let's continue. Whoa, and not fall. So, uh, this path here looks quite dangerous. I'm not sure if I'm on the right way. I just follow the footsteps in the snow. But it's like super steep. Like if I slip there, there is no stopping. And I'm not sure if I'm on the right path, because I, I actually don't even know which mountain. Because uh, there's no sign, no humans, and my map didn't have. It just says Kyonjin. But which of those mountains is the right one? Where, where's my goal? I have no idea. That's the downside of not having a guide, I guess. But uh, yeah, somehow I gotta get through the snow here without falling down there. Luckily the snow is still frozen, so I can actually walk on it. But uh, I don't know how it turns out when the sun comes, because then this will get super slippery and wet. And I already noticed the snow is getting softer. Nice thumbnail, I guess. So, uh, I'm getting further and further up. I still don't know which mountain, I assume maybe this one. Or the, or, hmm, maybe this one. But anyways, there's a big yak with big horns on my path, I think. And I don't know where to go. And he's staring at me all the time. Yes, he's directly on the path. Like if I, I would have to like uh, walk directly, uh, I actually would have to jump over him. So I guess I'm gonna take a break and hope he's uh, taking an, a trip somewhere else. See you once I passed Mr. Yuck. Okay guys, we made it past Mr. Yuck. And also I discovered now I'm, I'm on the right path I think. Because after Mr. Yak, the path turned in one to the, one of those super steep zigzag trails up this mountain. 
So I guess our goal is to get up there. And it's uh, super steep right now. We should be by now at, I would say, 4,000 meters. It's crazy if you think about that uh, a lot of those mountains around us, they are actually like uh, over 7,000 meters. I think I'm already as uh, high up as the highest mountain of uh, all of Europe, if I'm right. I think the Mont Blanc should be something around 4,000. But not sure, maybe you know better, tell me in the comments. But now I have this horrible zigzag path. But uh, I would say it's the, it's the finish line, it's the end goal. After that, it's only gonna go down. I'm excited, two days of walking down. Not so much talking, more, more climbing. So um, guys, we are in a bit of a struggle right now. Because uh, I walked along the path and it ends here. There's no way to go. And uh, I can try to climb up here a bit and maybe get a better view. But uh, doesn't look like this is any path. There are also no more footsteps. It just ends here. And I can't go there. This is a this is just straight up suicide. No no chance anybody can walk there. No chance. Maybe up till there, but this path nope. Also there are like no footsteps. Only some uh, yak steps. Is there any footstep? No. Like the entire path before I had footsteps in front of me. But now not not anymore. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna get up here a, a little bit, see if there's any other path. Maybe I have a better view from there. If not, then I gotta go back and uh, find a different way. If I won't find, then we sadly have to give up, I guess. But uh, yeah, give me a few minutes to explore and uh, I think we should find a way back. We, we should find it. So guys, uh, I couldn't find the, the path, so uh, instead what I did is uh, I just climbed up, straight up the mountain, the Yakwe. Couldn't find any more human footsteps and the sun is getting closer and closer. I can actually see it moving, like there. This line is getting closer and closer. So I, I have to hurry up because if I go down all the snow we we'll slowly start to melt and it's gonna get slippery, muddy and dangerous. But yeah. Most awesome view. So guys, I think we made it. I think this is the Kyanjin Ri. And this is the other Kyanjin, which is like 500 meters higher. But we're not gonna climb this one today. But uh, I actually have no idea if I can confirm this because I uh, haven't met anyone yet. Have met, haven't seen any sign saying this is the peak. And I have no clue where to go. And I tried to walk through the snow. And I actually crossed in. And the snow is higher than my knees. So I just had to empty up my shoes from uh, snow. I was like... Uh, all the way to my knees in the in the snow, so I'm. I don't want to walk on here. But yeah, I I can show you the view from there again. But I just guess this is the peak. I can't find any more paths. I can't even. I don't even have a path back. So I just have to do a very dangerous climb, and I have to do it very fast now, because I noticed. Since the sun is here, the snow actually doesn't hold on to me anymore. And I'm like crushing in and also it gets slippery and wet and muddy and I cannot get down there if it's too muddy. No chance like uh, if you have seen the path I came up it was just uh, I took straight up the Yakwe like no human path just straight up the mountain climbing. So 
I'm gonna see this as a success. I'm gonna rewatch Mr. Baldo's video just to compare if I'm really on the right peak, but uh, there is nobody I can ask. The map doesn't help because uh, it just shows that it's here, but it doesn't show any path up it or uh, where the peak is. And yeah, I have to find a way down. So, all the way down this for like one hour, two hours. By now the sun is here. I'm excited for my food. And yeah. But I can't imagine that it's uh, one of those peaks because uh, people told me uh, two and a half hours, the sign said. But the dude said uh, it's one and a half hour if I go without a backpack. And I, I've, I've been going for uh, yeah, around uh, two, two hours, 15 minutes. So uh, it should be here. Like I can't imagine uh, climbing uh, this peak or this peak or this peak in like 15 minutes. I, I don't think it's possible. But uh, yeah, enough talking. We gotta hurry up. I really want to go down here safe. Like this path is really, really dangerous. And I actually don't know any other way. So I can't vlog this. I, I need my hands to grab onto stuff. So see you once we're more in safe areas like uh, at Mr. Yak. So uh, turns out I didn't climb the mountain. I actually went completely wrong and went to a completely wrong place directly in the beginning. Like uh, remember when there was a sign? The sign was wrong as always. Whenever I get lost, it's because I trust the signs. So I just met uh, two travelers that stayed at the same guest house as me. And they told me I'm on the completely wrong site. Like I should have gone out of the village on a completely different site. Where I actually went to was a glacier. So if I want to climb Kianjin Ri now, it's gonna take me like half a day. Because uh, I gotta have to get back for one or two hours. And then I have another three hours of the climb and then another, then my entire day is gone just for the, for the peak there. So that's not nice. Also again, I got a bit lost. I think I walked wrong again. Mm. It's so stupid because there's no, no path, you know, you just have to find your own path here. But yeah, I guess I'm going to go back to the guest house. We still had the nice, nice view and nice hike. But uh, yeah, I really need to eat and then start my way back down. But yeah, sad, sad, sad day. I really would have loved to uh, at least climb a peak in the end. But yeah, that's as I said, that's the downside of not having a guide. Like, yeah. And yeah, never trust the signs. I trusted the signs two times and both times I lost like two or three hours of my day hiking nowhere. But yeah, anyways, see you uh, if I see something interesting or if I'm back at the guest house or anything. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm a bit disappointed now that I, I actually have to climb this peak behind there. It's crazy. Like, it would take my entire day to do this now. Um, also guys, I'm a bit confused and also scared now because uh, I've been walking and walking the way back, but uh, I can't remember ever having been here like uh, Everything I see here is new like the river and everything when I came here here. I was uh, On the fields with the yucks and now I'm walking. I think I'm walking the same way back and I'm at the river no yucks and uh, I can't remember having seen any of this before. It's super confusing. But I know that I came from this mountain and that there is the village, but uh, it's weird. It's super weird. Also guys, I do not remember walking such dangerous paths. Like those are the most dangerous paths I've been on in my entire life. Like this is crazy. If I slip here on the ice, I'm gone. 
Like this is crazy. I'm very, very confused. But there's only one way. Somehow found a way, and I think uh, I'm still gonna be back in town. Oh my god! Whew. I think we both just got scared like crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Whew. Didn't expect the ox to be scared this easy. Okay, so guys, I just wasted three hours for nothing. Now I'm gonna eat and then I'm gonna try the hike again. And then I, uh, yeah, then I'm, yeah, I guess the video will be very long and very, very boring. But uh, I mean, what should I do? There are no signs that uh, show the right way. So I just have to uh, try again and find a, find a way. Okay, let's go guys. Try number two, but this time with uh, wet shoes, wet socks and much less motivation. But uh, I'm gonna make it. So guys, after searching and searching and searching, by now I wasted four hours of my day just to get, get up 10 minutes. Helicopter is taking off. And yeah, I just met two guys and they told me I shouldn't go up because it's too dangerous. I should have gone in the morning before the sun comes, but I mean, that, that was exactly my plan. So. They gifted me some water and they told me it's gonna take three hours, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend the entire day here, not progressing, but yeah, let's watch the helicopter fly and uh, continue, it's a very, very steep. So guys, we came a bit further up, I assume it's still two hours to go, but it's so unbelievably hot, it's crazy, I'm sweating so much and I think I can't take off my clothes because I will get sunburned within a minute. It's so hot here, the only refreshing thing is the wind, but I'm so wet, it's so hot. Also before I start my hike back. I'm gonna throw away all my thick clothes. I, I brought so much stuff for absolutely nothing. You know, I had a bag on my backpack swinging from left and right and left and right for, for all the hike and I never ever needed it. Never never put on my jeans ever. Like, uh, if you come here in March, it's more hot than cold. The only cold thing is the night. But besides that, it's, it's just super hot. But yeah, I'm trying to continue, but it's just the most steep part of, of the entire hike yet. <laughs> okay guys, so <coughs> I'm quite high up now. After like an hour of hiking and uh, I already met the fourth group of hikers and they all told me I should not go up there. They said if I want to die then I should go because uh, it's too late now. You have to go very early in the morning. Also as I said I don't have hiking gear and they said it's very slippery and if you slip there is a chance that you die and it's very very dangerous and very very steep and scary and they said I should not go there. Like, first I ignored the people, like, okay, it will be fine, I can decide myself. But then the second group said, no, don't get, go there, it's, it's too dangerous. The third group came and said, no, just, just hike up somewhere, enjoy the view and go back down. And now the fourth group also said, it's super dangerous and I shouldn't go up there. So. And those are Nepali people, so uh, I'm gonna listen to them, I'm not gonna die here in this beautiful place. Instead, 
I'm gonna hike back down. We're gonna continue and we walk today to uh, Long Tang. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna stay probably the night. And, uh, enjoy. And yeah, see you guys once I'm back down in the city, show you a bit around. Because it's, it's quite a big city, like the biggest city of all the places I've been to here. And yeah, super windy up here. Gonna try to get back down safety because uh, with the vents, while going down, it's like super slippery. And I'm falling quite often, so I, I gotta be careful and use my hands so I can't block. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Anyways, and uh, let's go. Okay, guys, so we're finally leaving the ghost town. Maybe I can show you a bit of it, but the problem is this town is so muddy. Like it's crazy, like uh, I had no problems with my shoes for the first three days but since I arrived in this city it's just pure mud. As you can see here it's actually better to walk through the snow because it's just too muddy. It's crazy, also very slippery. You can see here I'm just sliding. I should go through the snow. Oh. Like today's hike gonna be with the wet socks. Well, look, I'm like knee deep into snow. And again, my shoes are filled with snow. But it's fine. Just gonna get some snow out of my shoes. So if the family in Lang Tang is, is home today, I'm gonna stay at their guest house because uh, I have to keep my promise. If they are not home, then I'm probably gonna continue. And maybe if, if, like, uh, if I arrive there way too early, maybe I'm just gonna eat food there and then continue because uh, it won't change anything for them because uh, the hotel price there is the food price. So. Okay, anyways, I, I gotta find a way through the city. As you can see, many, many lodges, many guest houses. There are also quite a few trackers, like at least 10 today. But uh, it's still very empty. Uh, and, the, and the ways here in the city, look at this. Like, every road is just this. Sometimes it's even worse with the snow. I somehow I gotta get through all of this and back to the monastery and then back on the track all the way to Lang Tang. Also, I'm looking for trash somewhere because uh, I finally want to throw away my pants because I've carried them since I arrived in India four months ago or five four months yes I carried this stupid jeans for four months thinking I would maybe need it someday but no so I would love to get rid of this because this shaking back is the worst thing of the of the track so Anyway, uh, gotta gotta stop vlogging for a second and uh, actually find the way. Okay, so uh, I managed to get rid of my uh, stuff. I gave it to uh, some people here, some guest house. Maybe they have better use for it. I'm now back in my short stuff. I packed my other pants into my bag, and the thing I was the most scared about happened. Not me dying, but the second most. The, the thing I'm the second most scared about, my backpack zipper broke. So now I'm gonna have to go the way back without the shaky bag, but instead I have a open backpack. So maybe I can find a place they, uh, maybe this, I can fix it somewhere. I mean, uh, worst case, I'm gonna fix it in Kathmandu. I'm gonna visit Mr. Gurum for sure once I'm there. And uh, 
He always knows how to fix everything. He also fixed my uh, zipper from this, so... Yeah. Journey to Lang Tang begins. Most people told me I should go further. Because uh, Lang Tang isn't that far, it's like uh, one hour. But... Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. I have uh, 3000 rupees left. Which means... I can eat four meals and sleep two times until I have to be back in Siaprubisi. This shouldn't be a problem. Also, I think I can manage to uh, go to the hot spring at Riverside. Like if I go to Langtang now, I buy food and then I continue super far away, then I can actually show you the hot spring. Because there's no need for a hot spring if I arrive at night, you know, so anyway enough talking I'm right now at the trash dump The most dirty place I've seen in uh, four days But I I guess I mean what what do you want to do? There's no uh, No uh, trash service here. No trash can no uh, No place to bring it. So I, I just assume People drop it here or maybe it's travelers. Maybe it's travelers that do it here Oh yeah, anyways, because uh, my trash, for example, is already stacking up in my uh, backpack here. So, yeah, anyways, enough of talking. We're gonna make progress today. Guys, what a day. First, I kinda... I nearly let my, uh, my mood ruin my day because of the fail track this morning. But now just a, just an hour later, my mood is back up and I'm uh, happy because uh, as you see, remember those stupid stairs. Every single stair I went up, I can now go down. Oh, it's a good feeling. Even though I didn't make it to the peak, I'm no real uh, mountain climber anyways. And I had no gear and no money. Like uh, on the internet it says, it's recommended to, to bring like $400 for the track and buy equipment and everything and I made everything using $50 so yeah I made it as cheap as possible here again we are at the power plant so uh, if you're wondering why I was able to charge my phone last night it's because of this I think there is a, it's connected to some uh, mountain river or something and it then flows down here I actually have to climb over it and into this house which probably has like a, a small turbine connected to a generator I mean I don't have to tell you how a power plant works but uh, they are leaking a bit It's funny like uh, how they fixed it. It looks like uh, when you, you, you know when you use like tin foil to fix something and it's not working. That's how it looks. But yeah guys, we have enough battery in the camera. We have enough battery in me. We have enough money to survive for two more days. Which means I should be able to fulfill both my promises. But I wasn't able to show you the peak. But anyways, just uh, just watch Harold Bother's videos because, uh, as you may know, I'm just a cheap copy of him. His videos are more interesting. He had much more time, more money, more everything. So he was able to spend much more time here and with the people and everything. He didn't have a uh, time pressure to go back to Kathmandu because of the India flight. Actually, while you're watching this. I will already be in India, Northeast India, Assam. So, yeah. Anyways, what we learned today is uh, don't get too upset if something doesn't work out. I mean, that, that's a lecture, that's a thing I learned for the first time in India. Don't get too frustrated if something doesn't work out. Because in India, very, very often things won't work out as you planned. So, but yeah, anyways. Let's go!
This is the monastery we seen yesterday. Not gonna disturb any uh, prayers or something yet. Instead, I'm gonna try to uh, walk around it because I think there's uh, another path here. Guys, we are making so much progress. It's a joke walking down. Like we should, we should soon arrive in Langtang actually, and it's just like 12 o'clock. So, uh, gotta continue. So, uh, if we continue in this pace, we're gonna arrive at Lama Hotel maybe today. Man, it feels so good to finally walk down. Exactly! <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm excited to see more uh, other travelers because when you're walking up you don't see much tra many travelers, only people coming down. But now I am the person coming down, so I'm, uh, I assume I'm gonna meet some travelers. And I can give them good news about the future journey. Because probably a lot of them don't know that this is the easy part here. And yeah, there's already the next uh, lodge. And after that it's already Langtang. And as I said, it's just... Oh, it's actually already 1pm. So we use quite a bit of time. But we have five more hours. We are actually back at the legendary Hard Rock Cafe. But I just assume it's still closed. Man, those horses are big. And it's crazy windy today. But yeah, if you want to know more about the Hard Rock Cafe, I recommend you watch Mr. Harold Bowder's video. Because he actually went inside and he talked to the owners and stuff. And uh, this big rock is actually a part of the hotel, uh, of the cafe. As you can see here, it's a wall. But uh, yeah, sadly, sadly closed and uh, no business going on. People told me it's uh, not just because there are not so many tourists. They also said there are not so many Nepali people and not so many locals. Because a lot of locals move to uh, Kathmandu and stuff. Also like... Uh, most people here, they are Tamangs and uh, yeah, I met a lot of Tamangs in uh, Kathmandu and they told me originally they also come from here or even from Tibet but uh, they now live in Kathmandu it's good money, many people, more potential partners life here is hard but uh, beautiful I would love to have uh, like a helicopter or something, like a, my own helicopter to, to fly around here. You can actually book a helicopter, but I could never afford it. Even if I sell everything I own in my bag, I could never afford it. It's getting hotter, but we're progressing fast. We're back in the thorn bushes. As you can see, the area changes quite quickly with horses and yaks and wild fields and now we have just thorny bushes so guys uh, all the Nepali locals they ask me the same question all the people in India always ask me are you not cold? 
because I'm in a short pants and a tank top. Like, uh, no, for me it's not cold. There's snow, there's a bit of wind, but there's so much sun. Like, uh, I don't know. We we Europeans we have a different body, I think, than uh, people that live over 40 degrees. Like for example, for Indians, 40 degrees is like a joke. It's a normal day for them. But for me, it's that. It's 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 hellfire. It's uh, unbelievably hot, 40 degrees. I I couldn't know. I don't know how how I could ever survive this. But this here, it's like. Uh, I don't know. The sun is maybe 20 degrees. The wind is a bit colder. Sure, there's snow, but the snow comes in the night. But yeah. It's fine, especially when you're walking. Like, if I do a break and it's so windy, it, it could get a bit cold. But uh, yeah, also, we reached uh, Lang Tang. And behind there is the landslide you can even see from here. And yeah, then we're gonna continue. It's crazy windy, like windiest day so far. Okay, so I think here I was at the, at the little uh, Buddhist celebration. Namaste. Or maybe it's even further down, but I think it's the right village. It was like a, not that far from Langtang, if I remember right. But yeah, it feels so good to finally walk down. It's so much easier. I haven't been out of breath even once. Maybe it was here. I'm not quite sure. Oh, it's called uh, Me Very Happy Guest House. That's a creative name. Me Very Happy. Me Very Happy too. But yeah, I think this is the last village before we reach uh, Langtang. You could already see it from the mountain. I think now we are back at the place I was at the little Buddhist ceremony and where I had the yak cheese tea. Not gonna get one of those again. Very sure. But uh, maybe I'm wrong again. I think I think I'm wrong again. Like uh, it all looks different once when you walk up than when you walk down. Oh no, it's it's here. It, it's actually here. But no drums, no ceremony today. And yeah, Lang Tang is right around the corner. Then we're gonna get some food, some tea. And then we're gonna see how far we come today. I have four hours more until it gets dark. Maybe I can make it to a close to Lama Hotel, but not sure. It also could happen that I have to, uh, for the first time, use my flashlight, but I don't want to do this. Because, uh, first, then I only have one hand to, uh, to uh, hike, so if I fall with my phone in one hand, not a good idea. Also, as I told you, those are the darkest nights I've ever seen here. Like, there's no light, nothing. It's just super dark. So, not excited to hike in the darkness. But uh, maybe we will do it. And uh, welcome back to Lang Tang. Also here again. Now you can see how massive this uh, landslide was. If you see this mountain there? Everything that's gray below there is the landslide. And as I said, it takes, uh, it takes 30 minutes hiking through this landslide. So. Oh no, 
Also, I remember last time I was here, the scary yucks. <laughs> I'm already scared again. All those, those big yucks there on the path. But yeah, anyways, I learned to not be scared of yucks. When I was watching Mr. Harold Boulder's vlogs, I was like, why is he so scared? It's just a, it's just a hairy cow. But no, it's not like the cows we have in Europe. They're much more uh, big and seem more powerful and have those large horns. Man, those bricks, those rocks are not fun to walk on. So I hope the yaks, the yaks will uh, not scare me. But it's harder said than done. Just quiet, continuing to walk, not staring. No quick movement. Oh man, can you please go from my path? Oh, they all stare at me. Please, come on. I don't know if I should just continue. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Maybe I'm gonna take a short trek here. Whenever they do quick movements, I'm scared. Made it through the yaks. Next time I'm going, coming to Nepal and hiking, I'm not gonna be as scared. I think. I also not wanna fall down here. I don't know what this is made for, if this is like a, if they grow something here or if it's just a bath for the yaks. I don't know. But yeah, we, we arrived at Lang Tang. Now I'm very sure. So I arrived back at the place from yesterday. Sadly, the guy is not here, he's down. But uh, the wife's here. I'm gonna get some tea and yeah, then we're gonna see how far we go. So guys, I have my tea. I'm waiting for my food. They don't have the chow mein, but I get, I think, potatoes if I understood right. And uh, yeah, a few things I, I forgot to tell, like I've seen it so often the past days. Uh, the super old woman here, they have like a traditional type of hair hairstyle I would say they have like the longest hair I've ever seen it almost touches the ground and they bind it to a string I would say and then in the end they add like colorful uh, strings so uh, some of the hair actually touches the floor so quite crazy like a woman at age like 90 and they're just hiking here carrying like firewood and having their hair touch the ground and yeah I'm gonna enjoy my food my tea and then we have four more hours to hike and then uh, day four will be done day five will be uh, way to riverside taking a bath in the hot spring and uh, then see up Rubesi Namaste and yeah family is here but the dad is still down.
Also, it's so windy. Even my sugar flew from the... I couldn't add sugar to my tea because it was just flying away. Anyways, talk to you later. So, um, turns out I got rice. I'm nearly finished. I'm gonna finish this soon. But first, let me show you. You see this in uh, literally every Tibetan household here. They have a big wooden... I don't know the English term. But you see it. There's a candle. There's the Tibetan snakes. Also, they don't get bad. They can be here for two years and you can still eat them. Then they have pictures of the Dalai Lama and other different personalities. And yeah, so this I've seen in uh, literally every Tibetan building I've, I've been in the past days. So, yeah, it's interesting. Also, it's very warm inside compared to outside because uh, very windy outside and here we have a fire this off now but there's a kitchen fire like here and those stoves also every household had so far in uh, Kathmandu the stoves they actually uh, went as far and they put a computer fan on the side so they can just turn on the fan and the fire goes and then two minutes later turn off the fan and fire is burning so yeah anyways we have a uh, quite some hike, hike ahead of us so uh, gotta finish and then uh, probably see you outside on the track let's go also guys if you also want to come here and enjoy take a stop in Lang Tang come to Lhasa Hotel and Lodge. I was asked to uh, give this to people I meet, but uh, yeah, I have an entire bag full of those cards because everybody just wants promotion. But uh, anyways, uh, so you guys can come here. It's in the middle of Lang Tang. And uh, yeah, anyways, now let's get really back to the track. So I got my change now. Back at a uh, broken Lang Tang. But uh, I hope you can even hear me and I hope my self-made wind protection is working because uh, I can't hear much because the wind is just so loud and so crazy. Like we didn't even have had close this wind before. I think here was the place where the yucks stayed. Oh man, I'm even crying. The wind makes me cry. Oh man, I hope we get, uh, we reach a less windier place later on. People said I can reach Lama, it will take four hours, but this means I arrive exactly when it gets dark. So, I gotta be fast. Also, we again just burned through uh, one entire battery because uh, after sleeping, when I woke up, literally my camera, my batteries, my laptop, everything was just like frozen. The nights get quite cold here. But on daytime, I, I've closed my jacket because of the wind, but uh, it's already too hot again. Man, this village, if it, if it still would be here, it would have such a nice view down this hill. Anyways, become the donkey. Next tiny village we are passing. I forgot the name, but uh, I think we uh, should arrive soon in like one hour at the at the place we started yesterday at the little village. Again, my best friends, the yaks. 
But I know they know me. Word goes around that a friend of Yaks is here. The friend of Yaks is scared. And the Yaks are too. Namaste. Yes, yes, back. Huh? Uh, I tried to go to Lama. How, how long will it take? Three hours. Okay, then I have to hurry. Thank you. Okay, three hours. I mean, that's, uh, that's actually perfect. So we will arrive before it gets dark. And it means if we start very early tomorrow, I will be at Riverside with the perfect time to have some uh, lunch and some uh, hot spring. So I can also keep that promise kind of. And then we can continue to Siapro Besi and then the, the hike is actually done. Like it's sad that I have such a time and money pressure because I would have loved to just uh, went up here, relaxed, stay more at the places, like spend a day somewhere like uh, Harold did. He like uh, often he just stayed like a day in a place and he uh, just stayed with the locals, talked to them, filmed what they are doing. But I mostly just arrive. In the evening, then I eat and sleep, then it's back to hiking. So not much time for anything else. So Also, uh, I don't expect those vlogs to be super interesting. Actually, I know they're not super interesting, but I, I never promised that they would be interesting. So uh, yeah, anyways, it's better than nothing. Also, it gives me like, a, it gives you something to do. Some, somebody to talk to, you know, somebody to tell those stories because uh, obviously I haven't been in, on the internet for five days now. Even Siapru Besi had no internet. So, yeah. Today we're gonna make progress. And once we finish this hike, we're gonna get ready for India again. No time to relax for me. See this gigantic yak at the end of my path. I hope he, and now he, he yells at me. Oh no. I hope he uh, takes a break from there until I arrive. <laughs> so guys, yes, see you next time. <laughs> yes. So I, I just met the, the husband from where I, uh, Lhasa, Lhasa Hotel and the, other lady that recommended me the hotel I stayed tonight in a yesterday night in Kanti village. Both the people in, at the same point, so uh, now I got even more cards. So, Lhasa Hotel Lodge, nice people. But yeah, anyways, my uh, wind filter fell down, so uh, let me fix that. I'm in a hurry. But the yaks decided otherwise. I'm um, sorry I'm not vlogging so much guys, but uh, I really have to hurry. The sun is already disappearing behind the mountain. I'm already kinda 
running quite fast, but uh, yeah, I can make it. I can make it. I have like one hour until it, it starts to get dark. I should have one hour normally, but it's a bit cloudy today. Anyways, I don't really have time to vlog right now. I have to get a place to sleep. So, see you there. So I, uh, I just passed by like 10 yaks and they didn't do anything. I just, even this close. So I'm very proud of me because I'm in such a hurry. So uh, I just did it and it worked. Anyways, sun is still disappearing. Let's go. Guys, believe me, I'm excited for the hot spring tomorrow. Also now, by now I'm already at the place where the woodworkers were, we seen. So, uh, also I met another group of travelers and they told me, a group of locals, they told me uh, I can reach Lama before it gets dark. But it's one more hour, but walking here is quite painful. Like those spiky stones all the time. Like if you're lucky then you have a path like next to it you can take. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna continue to hurry. Tomorrow will be a big day. So uh, guys, I forgot to finish the vlog. It's dark now. We didn't really make it to Lama. It's a long story I can uh, explain tomorrow. But for now I have my uh, snack as always and my tea. I have my chow mein. And yeah, it's uh, time to sleep. We made huge progress today and uh, tomorrow we're gonna go to the hot spring. So. Yeah, thank you if you watched through all of this and uh, yeah, thank you.